Yo, big dunk. Um, this is a video I'm very excited to bring to you guys. I'm just gonna do a very different stuff from what I thought I would do. At first, I thought I would just do full like raw footage, um, but I really didn't do much recording outside of actually at the concert. I did a little bit in the car ride up there. I made a tiny video on the car ride back, um, but the main bulk of my recording was just during the concert and even then i didn't film like a whole ton of the concert you know most of my time was actually experiencing it you know believe it or not i can actually experience it but i did want to film some you know just so i could remember some stuff try to film some hype moments to you know have for myself to keep and to show to you guys um that little moment i showed earlier was just something i guess to set the mood you know just show you guys for i guess the noise on um, my phone right here you know it's got a good camera uh, for the most part it records sound well but when the bass is that loud and it's just thumping that hard um, it does distort it a bit and I mean damn that concert if I had to describe it as two things it was loud and it was fun um, probably three I would say crazy um, I mean the bass I don't know if you've ever shot a gun but like the, the reverberation just like through your body it's not like it actually felt like that but it was kind of a scaled down version of that that's the only thing I can really relate it to um, but I mean, Travis, as a performer, he was really good. The pyrotechnics and the lights were crazy. Um, and I mean, the crowd was also, I was in the floor, so, you know, getting dirty. Um, and I mean, I feel like the energy there in the crowd was crazy. I didn't really notice what was going on with the people in the stands because I'm focused on the stage. They're all behind me. Suckers. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to just get into this video. I'm going to roll through, show you guys the car thing, and then, you know, I'm going to kind of hop in and out, do some little talking, maybe fill in some gaps, do some like uh, explanations, whatever. I don't know why I blanked out. But, you know, because there wasn't really any smoke actually filmed in this video, I'm going to have to supplement. Cheers, everyone. Benjamin! This is, of course, the Ven emoji, as you can tell by the green top. Fire. Yo, holy shit, look at this view. Driving through the mountains. Ah, look like, at the top of his head. <laughs> a little less than an hour left, I want to say. Um, Waze is saying I got a bit more than an hour left, but we stay gunning it. So, hell yeah. And it's just like, look at this view. Imagine living like down there. I don't know if you can really see, but there's like a bunch of farmhouses and shit. Dog, imagine growing some good ass gas. You got this whole scenery around you. Chilling. All right, so we got a large time gap between the, this last recording and the next one that's coming up. So I'm gonna just kind of fill in the spot for you guys. Um, but first, let's take a little rip. Cheers, everyone. Contrary to YouTube's belief, yes, I am not a minor. Yes, I do be driving. And so it was about a three hour drive. Um, the last recording was about two hours in. So I had like a little more than an hour left. It was recorded right around two. And I ended up at my friend's house um, around like 3.15, I wanna say. -ish. The first thing I did aside from dapping up my homie and saying hi to his family, of course, was using the bathroom, you know, three hour drive, straight shot. I wasn't trying to take any rests, so you know, I had to handle business. Um, but then, yeah, you know, got him, and then we went and we drove up to meet my other friend who lives on campus. And so we stayed there um, on these very thin, I brought these very, very old, very thin sleeping bags and air mattresses. Um, wasn't the most comfortable sleeping arrangement, you know, you gotta make do. And I didn't really want to have to pay a shitload of money for the hotel. Already paid a shitload of money for the tickets. Ended up paying a shitload of money for merch, by the way. Shit. Fire. And the shirt. I mean. But you don't even. Hmm. If anyone's been on the tour and they know how much this shit costs, they can tell you in the comments. I got robbed. Well, not really, though. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's for the experience you pay the money and for the memories attached to it So we just kind of chilled in his room for a bit, you know, did some little pre-gaming and whatnot And then eventually around like 7, 7 15, we're like, okay, yeah, we're gonna walk over to the venue And it's cold, 
It's cold as hell. It wasn't snowing in Pennsylvania yet, but I mean, it was still freezing. There was still snow on the ground from the last time it snowed. Um, you know, we're about to be in the pits. So of course, I'm not gonna bring a sweatshirt. I'm not gonna bring a jacket. So we make the walk. It's probably like 10 to 15 minutes. We run that shit though, um, because we're in t-shirts and stuff. You know, I was just in a normal t-shirt and some joggers. Uh, not exactly the best outfit for like 17 degree weather, but we made it quick. Um, we got there, the line was pretty fucking huge to get into general admission and it was moving super slowly. I don't know what was up with that, but we did get in on time. Um, again, line was crazy to get wristbands, but you know, you can kind of just cut in. Like, it's kind of a douchey thing to say, but like, dude, I'm not trying to wait. The concert's going to start in like 15 minutes. There's a line that's going to take like 30 minutes. These people aren't paying attention to their spot. I'm going to just step in. They don't know. And so, you no, know, that's how it went. We got in, got in fine. Um, and then, you know, got checked in and we walked in and I'm about to show you what we saw when we first walked into the stage. Bro. That's baller. With the dunks. And the schmenge. So that was at like directly at 8 when we're walking in and uh, we just kind of stood there for 30 minutes and then finally a DJ came out at 8.30 and uh, he started playing some music and you know it was crazy um, between the fact that you know this is my first introduction to the bass and the fact that you know having stood there for half an hour you just kind of want some music um, it went hard and I mean you play family ties it's always going to go crazy <laughs> That wasn't the only song that the DJ played, uh, that was just one of the only ones that I filmed. There was another song that I did film him playing, however, and it might not be one you really think would play at a Travis Scott concert, but the crowd still loved it nonetheless. So the DJ finished his set around 9, and when he ended, he said, the next time you see me, I'll be here with the man, Travis Scott. So, you know, we're all hyped. Um, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And another 30 minutes pass of waiting, just standing there, you know, like, huh. What's going on here? Like, we know he's back there. What's going on? Um, so, you know, whatever, they're trying to build suspense or whatever they do, but finally... We get a little announcement that says The little warning went out for about 30 seconds and you know really did help build up the hype and even though you know we're on the Utopia tour we know what the first song is going to be it's going to be the first song on Utopia that doesn't mean we weren't any less hype when we heard it come in So at the very start, he just was playing through Utopia songs, he went through Hyena, and then the second track, Thank God. And that's where I got this video, the transition from the second track, Thank God, to the third track, Modern Jam, for the clip you saw in the beginning. After that, he did a little switch up and he decided to play the song A that he was featured on in Lil Uzi's album this year. And I mean, that just brought some whole other hype to the crowd. <laughs> It's been a little bit, so before I get into some more yapping, 
Cheers, everyone. But yeah, so anyways, as the concert got on and, you know, as we really got underway, he started taking people out of the crowd and he'd put them on this, like, I don't even know what the hell you call it. It looks like a big head thing, kind of. But it's this platform and it's connected to the ceiling. It just kind of moves around. So you get people that kind of harnessed in and you'd be playing music. So, I mean, it was pretty cool. I didn't get chosen. No one I knew got chosen, but still a cool thing to see. That was also awesome just because he played STP Interlude, which wasn't really a song I was expecting him to play at a concert. Um, another song that I really wasn't expecting to hear, not because it's not good for a concert, just because like of all the Travis songs he performed, I didn't think it would be this one. But I mean, when we heard 3500 come in, the crowd went absolutely nuts. Had to let the video play out to the drop of course but the next song i wouldn't say it wasn't something that was unexpected i would say it was something that was very requested um you could even hear us i'm begging for it to be played and uh he definitely delivered <laughs> That was just different levels of hype and that performance also had one of the few parts that wasn't just completely drowned out by the bass. So I'm going to play that even though this video is already definitely copyright striped. Um, if not now, then definitely after I play this. Of course, the bass had to come back in. It's only right. But looping back to what I was talking about earlier about songs I didn't really expect to hear or songs I didn't really expect to go as hard, um, I just really forgot how hard the beat drop on Upper Echelon went. And especially in this setting, man. And again, as the concert went on, different stuff just kept happening. Um, you know, just like Travis Scott raising up on a platform while opening up for my eyes. Or for a fucking invasion of gorillas on stage. Now, I'm not going to lie. I was really thinking that it was about to be like a guest appearance. I didn't think it would just be like two or three dudes in gorilla suits walking around for a bit. I'm not gonna say it wasn't hype anyways, but I was expecting a bit more, can't lie. There's been reports of an escape at the circus. What the fuck? You should be expecting visitors soon.
That was cool and all, but this next song they performed definitely got the most participation from the crowd. And I guess it's only right that he started out with an intro like this. If you love this song as much as I do, I want to hear you as loud as possible. This is it. Because we finished the whole song a cappella for him. What's coming next can only be described as Fiend Frenzy because I don't really remember how many times it was. I think it was seven to eight times Travis Scott played the song. Not all the way through, but just like the beginning part. Um, I didn't record it all. I recorded a good bit of the intros. So I'm just going to play them all in this little montage right now. So I hope you like the song Fiend. <laughs> And that's the end of all my concert recording. Um, if I could summarize the rest of the night for you guys real quick. You know, got out of line and first thing I did was go and get some water and some Gatorade. Need the hydration. I didn't have any water in the pits. I didn't have like a joint or anything. I did have pens. You know, those can still dehydrate you. Um, and then as soon as I did that, got in the merch line. Uh, mainly to get a sweatshirt because I needed something to cover up from the cold and the wind for the walk home. Got a shirt just because I saw it there and I'm like, oh, that's sick. Um, good financial decisions as usual. Uh, anyways, got outside with my friend and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know where my other friends are. And these are the friends who like were staying in their room on campus. So we're like, okay, we need to know where they are. Try calling them. They don't answer. We're like, oh, shit. Um, so we decide, you know, what? we're going to walk back to the dorm room, uh, to the building, hope we can get let in or, you know, we can somehow contact them because they aren't answering at all. So we start walking back. It's like a 16 minute walk. It's cold as hell. We're using goddamn Google maps to tell us like which way to walk. That's how lost we are. Um, you know, we find our way back and then probably when we're like five minutes away, I finally get a call from my friend. He was like, yeah, we're back in the room. Um, phones both died, you know, just charged them up and all that. So we got up all good. Um, in the concert, I think it ended around like 1130. Got back to the dorm room around 12 because, you know, waiting for the water and for the um, merch took a bit. So then we're like, okay, we got to go find some meat. At first, we wanted to go and hit um, Raising Cane's. That wasn't closed or that was closed at the time. Um, we tried hitting some other places that were all closed. Another place we tried to go to had a 40 minute line. So we finally found this like pizza calzone kind of place. Um, still had a good line, but like they were churning them out. So shouts out to them. Um, I got, what was it? I got an Italian calzone and I got this like mozzarella pesto 
kind of like pizza bread thing. Dude, I mean, when you've just been jumping around at a concert, when you've just been, like, my only meal that day, my only full meal that day was the breakfast before I left. So, you know, I'm starving. That shit didn't taste any better than anything else, um, especially because, you know, I had a joint before it. But, yeah, you know, as soon as we got back to the room after eating all that, um, pretty much just slumped, set up the sleeping arrangements, tried to sleep. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, but we got better sleep than I thought I would. Woke up the next morning around 11.30, kind of lay there for a bit, got up, and we went and, we went and got some food, but we got some goddamn halal cart. Um, which is, you know, some Middle Eastern food. I got some chicken over rice and a honey bun and a Pepsi for breakfast at like 12. So that was pretty good. Um, went back, packed the stuff up, played a little bit of Mario Kart on my Switch, and then dropped my homie off at his house. Pew! Drove back home three hours. Um, it was snowy as shit in Maryland when I got back here. It still is snowy as shit in Maryland. Shouts out to the snow. Um... But, like, when I was on the highway, like, kind of getting near my house, like, dude, there was complete snow all over the road. You can't even see the lane lines. We're, we're straight freestyling while driving. I made it home safe, though. I'm the GOAT. Uh, you can't stop me. And speaking of you can't stop me, YouTube, keep taking out my videos. You can't stop me. I always go complain on Twitter. They always get put back up. I don't get why they can't just accept my appeal. Sorry about a little tangent. It's goddamn 2.30. My brain's kind of running out of fumes. I'm going to take one last rip, and I'm going to say goodnight to you guys after showing you guys the little car session that I almost forgot about. Fuck, I forgot about the car video. Anyways, I'm going to just throw that in for the outro, whatever. Um, cheers, everyone. Oh, now this shit wants to be clogged. Perfect. Dry his hands, too, from the wind. Gotta moisturize. Peace. Yo, big dunk. Um, I have a left. I didn't even record any smoke. I recorded some of the actual concert, but I just had to show off this amazing view. I'm not really looking at what I'm filming because I'm trying to, you know, stay in the lines, but I'm hoping y'all are getting a nice view. But yeah, it was super fun. I'll talk about more of that when I get home. I'll smoke a little bit when I get home and we'll chat. See you guys then.